we're joined live now, I'm told, by Andre Lopera. He is a structural engineer um, who is with Oracle Engineering here in Jacksonville. And Andre, can you hear me? Yes, I can. We've talked to you before about these issues, specifically when the St. Vincent's parking garage collapsed, right? So when you see this picture at the Jacksonville International Airport, what's going through your head? What is going to be the first step as this investigation gets underway? Well, one, we need to figure out how, well, how, how the fire started, which uh, the fire investigation will start right away. And then we need to estimate how hot the fire was burning and how long it was burning for. And that'll give us an indication as to how bad we expect the concrete to be damaged. Because uh, what we're worried about is the concrete cracking due to high temperature fire and a long time of exposure. And then once it starts cracking, it, it will start falling, which means it'll start breaking up within chips and pieces, and then those just start falling to the other level, and it starts weakening the concrete. So once you are able to find out how long the fire was burning and the cause, what happens from there? What do you have to do to say that, hey, this is structurally sound again? Right. So we would uh, uh, go out there, and we're, what we're looking for is, Cracks. cracks in the concrete, which will potentially allow water to get in there. And then we're looking for spalling, which is the concrete actually being chipped away and basically just falling onto the levels below. And uh, what we would do is we would start closing off those sections of the garage to make sure that nobody's walking through there and to definitely make sure that there's no, uh, just th that there's no tra kind of traffic through there. Uh, because uh, we're concerned with the concrete losing strength. And when you have cars driving over with concrete, you know, the, it opens up the potential for, uh, you know, the concrete to fail, like it did at St. Vincent's Garage. Sure, I can understand that. Um, and what we saw with the St. Vincent's parking garage incident, uh, people, it took people a while to get their cars back, um, in some cases months. So what do you expect to happen here for the people who are just sitting waiting like, hey, my car is parked there, what do I do now? Well, uh, the... The initial process is for uh, the fire department to clear clear the area off and hopefully get you know basically a construction uh, specialist or structural engineer and you know, probably the city of Jacksonville inspectors to go out there and clear the area for people to start getting their cars out. Yeah, because that's it's definitely a concern. But you know the most important thing is the public safety. As a structural engineer, that is our main goal. So. At some point, will they have to, when will they remove those cars from the garage? Does that happen immediately, or does it happen after the investigation is complete? Well, not necessarily an investigation. Uh, it, not necessarily like a full you know, investigation, a full completion of any sort of report. Basically, what we're looking for is just, uh, it's a visual inspection initially, and we're looking for uh, weak areas of concrete, like areas where the concrete cracks uh, are, are much are large and big areas of spalling, you know, more more than you know more than square foot of spalling of concrete just falling off of that uh, of those slabs. Andre, can you give us any perspective on what repairs would look like in a situation like this with such a large structure? Yes, uh, the the repair for the fire damage, uh, which is you know basically concrete and all repairs. Similar to uh, other types of repairs, you know, basically you're you're looking for just a lot a lot of cracks, and you're looking for uh, potential pathways for you know water to get uh, to get into those areas. So the but the repair of concrete it's it's pretty it's straightforward, you know it's uh, we design it to meet or exceed today's uh, building code standards and uh, the concrete standards uh, the ACI manual, and uh, and then yeah the the areas uh, shored up, and um, and then you know the repairs are done, and then the concrete uh, and then the garage is reopened once the concrete meets, meets its full strength again. And I'm not sure if you've seen some of the video of uh, the initial flames or the smoke. It, it looks like it is. Wherever this fire started, it was on the third floor of the garage. What does that tell you? I mean, is that anything that? Is that good news, bad news? Is there anything you can uh, derive from that information? 
Well, uh, <laughs> I, it's it, it's it's somewhat bad news because it's potentially affected the floors above and the floors below. So okay. with a, with a fire that starts on the roof, you're only worried about the floor slab below you. In this case. Now you're basically sealing off all the areas on the slabs above that and the slabs below that. So it's not, not, not a good place for the fire to start. Pretty scary stuff. And, you know, thankfully we were, we, we've been informed that there are no serious injuries. But when you think about a, a parking garage, people are arriving. They're getting ready to leave. They could be there in the parking garage. And, you know, some new information from city officials will come in terms of what that looks like. But um, obviously, Andre, it, it's a long process from start to finish, figuring out what is safe and when it will be safe. Yes, yes, it is. It is. And the, uh, the, the, the longest part of the process is that investigation time. As, as you saw with St. Vincent's Garage, it's, you know, many, many months of investigation and uh, report, report writing and uh, documentation. So, uh, you know, but it, the, the hope is for this garage that, uh, you know, we've seen what happened in other parking garages that have failed in this area that, that uh, we're able to you know, te team up with the city and we're able to get out there as soon as we can and uh, clear the area off and at least uh, provide some sort of uh, uh, traffic path so that, the, so that there's no cars or no people walking around the immediate vicinity of where the fire happened. And Andre, I'm sorry, I'm putting you on the spot here, but do you anticipate going out to this garage yourself to inspect it? Is that a possibility? Um, I would be open to inspecting it, uh, but you know, of course, I you know would need to you know have some sort of uh, you know some sort of phone call, some, someone to in order to start that process. Right. So you wait for the phone call. Okay, that's great. Is there any information you think that would be valuable to our viewers to understand when it comes to the structural integrity of the garage now that it appears there was a, a fire on the top floor? Uh, yeah, so as far as uh, the integrity, it would, it would affect the slab in the air, the slabs and the beams in the vicinity of the fire, but you're not talking about it affecting a slab that's 200 feet away. So basically, as far as closing off the garage, we would isolate an area around the fire, add a little bit more distance to that, and then isolate that area from top to bottom from, uh, to every single floor. But, you know, things like, you know, stair, I wouldn't expect things like stairwells to be affected. If, if the fire happened in the middle of the garage somewhere, I wouldn't, affect, I wouldn't expect for, you know, stairwells to be affected or cars that were parked on the complete other side of the garage to be, inspect, uh, to be affected. In this garage, um, if you're familiar with it, the hourly garage, uh, there are some walkways that lead into the airport where you're going to be getting on a plane. Um, those walkways, uh, are those a part of the conversation here when it comes to um, the integrity of the structure? Um, I would not expect, I, and I, I believe you're referring to the walkways in between, in between the airport. Um, yes, I'm not in sure the garage. If mm -hmm. Are they elevated? I think at some points they are. I can't say for certain, but I, I believe you park on, you know, a few top floors of the garage and you walk across to get to the actual airport. Uh, yes, I do remember. Uh, if the fire happened close to those areas, then I would be concerned because... Okay. The, those beams probably are connected to columns that also support the garage. So, if it, yeah, I, I would I would expect that. But you know, not not knowing where the fire is, it, it's hard to tell from this point. But it, if it happened close to those walkways, I would expect that the walkways those walkways would be uh, also uh, closed off to the public. Yeah, big potential impact here. Andre Lopera, structural engineer, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your expertise with us as we're um